Paul, as you all know, is very much into books of all kinds, but mostly in his early life, he was crazy about Sherlock Holmes, and all you heard was Sherlock Holmes. It was fun to view the Sherlock Holmes films together and hear your cultural commentary. Whenever I stayed with them on my home leave visits to Grace on Sunday nights, Pizza Together and Sherlock Holmes DVDs were habitual alongside Paul's insightful critique. It has been an honor to be your movie buddy of last resort because while I have seen some of the best films ever produced, I have absolutely seen many of the worst films ever created. You're welcome, Bethy. I have to say, my first memory of Paul as a theologian is back when I was in high school in the late 1960s. On break from college, Paul was the guest speaker one night at our youth group meeting. He spoke about the newly released album, Beggar's Banquet by the Rolling Stones. This made quite an impression on us. With you holding up a comic book at Word of Life, looking like Stan Laurel with Pam, um, having a look of disgust. I could never have imagined um, growing up that um, I could sit in a sit in a pew and listen to a uh, minister give a sermon on Ernie Davis or Jim Brown or um, Aretha Franklin and her father, much less Elvis. I'll never forget hearing a sermon on Elvis Presley. That was just phenomenal. Here's here it goes. Oh, Rutgers really beat Syracuse. Rutgers really beat Syracuse. First he smashed them, then they bashed them, then they threw them to the ground. Rutgers really beat Syracuse 24 to 7. But uh, when Wake Forest played Syracuse, the winner of that game got to, uh, took the other uh, um, couple out for ice cream at Holstein's. And uh, the downside is Wake Forest... I don't think, never won, but the upside is Dem and I got a lot of free ice cream, uh, which was very good. Well, we were up in the North Country in the summer, and there was a bookstore there, and he had been in the bookstore a while, and he came out, he was 17 years old, and he said to me, I've come across a wonderful book, and it's called Romans in the Bible. And I tried to keep from smiling, but I said to myself, here it comes. When Reverend Paul Liggett preached, I said, oh my, he has the voice of God. Powerful, articulate, and authentic. Thank you for giving of your gifts and resources through these many years to help our presbytery in our work and mission as you challenged us to think in new ways, ponder the mysteries of the one in our midst, and journey with your brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you journey into the next chapter in your life. I have enjoyed a continuing friendship with you since we were in seminary at Gordon-Conwell. Your strong personal skills in the pastorate were evident from the start. My wife and I, are very grateful to the Lord for our friendship with Pablo and Beth Leggett. They have been faithful friends lately by their solidarity with us when our dear son Daniel was called to the house of his Heavenly Father. Our gratitude has no limits. You have married four of my children, baptized five grandchildren, had memorial services for my sister Barbara, for my son John McCall, for my husband John. Um, we wanted to be a part of your celebration of your time in Montclair and um, tell you how much your time to, with us meant to us during ups and downs of our family life and so much of our family life revolved around Grace Church. Thank you for all of it. Thank you for being a part of our lives, for our daughter's weddings and we wish you the very best in the next stage of your life. Listen, we're so so uh, proud to be considered your friends over all these years. We, we love you a lot, and uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah, stay healthy. Love you. Ciao, ciao. Um, for me personally, I'm just looking back at all the years we spent together as kids running around Grace, only to come back later and have you marry Rick and me. <laughs> 
And then to come back later and have you baptize our grandchildren is something just so special and precious to me. So. Your leadership has meant so much to so many people over so, so many years that it's just, it's, it's hard to enumerate the many blessings that people have received. When I think about some of my earliest memories of Grace Church, uh, some of them include crawling all the way under the pews at the end of the service and getting as filthy as humanly possible. Oh, obviously crawling under the pews was the most fun thing ever to do. I remember sliding under the pews the way that my nieces do now and the, the feel of the sandy dirt from people's shoes on my Sunday clothes. Years. I think back to the time at the church, and Paul, I am so grateful for your thoughtful engagement of scripture in your sermons. And to both Paul and Beth, to you both, what was special is aside from the pastor relationship, we all became friends. Over the years, we shared so many important life moments. Beth, you also shared our, your experience when I got sick, which helped me so much. Thank you. Beth, you and I have come to Grace Church so many Thursdays for choir rehearsals over 40 years, so many Sundays to teach Sunday school over 35 years. We have shared many joys and sorrows together, but at all times, in all situations, the one word that defines you for me is gracious. Gracious hospitality, gracious caring. Most of all, I have seen gracious faithfulness in your devotion to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the members of this congregation year after year. To our lives. We have been in many churches since then and have had many lovely women serve as pastor's wives, but we repeatedly say Beth Leggett was the best. Beth? You and Susan have been the backbone of the second soprano section, but your dedication to choir is really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all you have done in and for and through Grace Church. I send greetings from Linda and myself, Paul, on this occasion of your retirement as the pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church. When you came to preach at my ordination service, the scripture text you selected was the Apostle Paul's charge to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 9. The title of your sermon was, God's Word is Not Bound. Although Paul had been imprisoned in chains when he wrote it, he assured Timothy that God's Word is not bound or chained. Your ministry exemplifies this strong biblical focus and a holistic understanding of what it means. As you enter retirement, I am sure that you will continue to fulfill your ministerial calling with characteristic intelligence, humor, and grace. I wish you and Beth many blessings wherever God May leave. So that was your surprise from your special friend, Glenn Weaver. And uh, Beth, I've been thinking about the uh, the early days when you were pregnant with Gwen and I was pregnant with Matt. And there we, I think we had 20, over 20 babies born into the nursery that year. And also in those early years, we would uh, go to craft shows at Christmas time. It's a lovely memory to think about. We would go out to craft shows and then we'd go have a nice lunch or hot cocoa someplace. And it's a lovely Christmas memory. And Paul... I really appreciate the times that you came to pray with, with Rich before my surgeries. It was a blessing. Paul always took the time to visit with those in the hospital. When I was unexpectedly hospitalized in New York City, out of the blue, I looked up and there was Paul. And I just want to say, you see my background picture. In the background, you see that is Big Ben there. I want you to understand that you have been the Big Ben in so many people's lives, letting them know what time it is in their life to understand the blessings from God. Um, but I, I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for is his, his constant prayer and presence with us through... Um, through everything that the whole the whole journey that we went through with Peter and 
And I'm also very, very grateful to Beth um, for always inviting Melissa to James's birthday party because she wasn't a girly girl. And always look forward to our chats with her and her, her hospitality at the open house every year. So, Paul, it is hard to do justice to our working association in three minutes, but I'll try. It has been an honor working with you. You are the absolute definition of an example of the word collegial. Even when we disagreed, we worked diligently to come to an agreement and understanding, moving forward to make congregational worship meaningful and spirit-filled. No matter what the purpose of the service is, no matter what the text states, no matter what the season, you have always masterfully, purposefully, and mindfully woven together a sermon or meditation that meets the needs of the congregation always, always preaching the saving grace of Jesus and the hope of salvation in Christ. Um, and Grace Church, oh, we'll miss you so, so, so much. Thank you for the amazing um, role that you've played of ministry in my own life, and especially in this most recent um, challenge in our lives with our son. Um, I am just so, so grateful for your prayers and your uplifting of support and um, the faith that you've demonstrated for me and my family. After Peter went to be with the Lord, Paul delivered a beautiful, uplifting message at the service to celebrate his life, and Beth participated in the choir on that occasion as well. Most recently, in the most unusual of circumstances in this COVID environment, Paul officiated at Melissa's wedding on the church grounds, and Beth was there as well. Beth, I, I could go on and on, but one scripture verse came to mind, and in fact, it kind of popped out at me when I was trying to think of what to say, and it's from Galatians 6.10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Beth, you have done good. You've done really good to the people of grace for all these many years. And we're really going to miss you. Just just know that um, Grace Church will never be the same. And um, thank you for sharing the um, God's gifts with us. God bless you all in your retirement. Be well. Paul and Beth, you have taken an interest in us and our lives. And for that, I am thankful to God with you two and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing about uh, the next step in your journey so we love you both and uh, good luck so thank you again for your faithful service to grace and may the Lord abundantly bless you in the years ahead so now may our amazing living God continue to grant the legates his peace in 2021 as Paul adjusts to retirement, and both keep on trusting the Lord for their future adventure together with him. Amen. Paul and Beth, congratulations. Blessings in good measure be yours. I'll miss you, Paul and Beth, when you go, but please go with God. Thank you, Lord, for Paul and Beth's uplifting presence in our lives, and may you send all your blessings their way in their retirement years. Paul, Beth, may God bless you both.